Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to review Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jawad. This book was published in 2021 by Random House and the hardcover comes in at 368 pages. I read a free ebook copy of this book that I received for review purposes through NetGalley. This is a memoir from Suleika Jawad who wrote a number of pieces and who shared her experiences in videos for the New York Times in an Emmy award-winning series called Life Interrupted. She was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, which essentially means that she got a potentially deadly cancer diagnosis at age 22. And in this book, she shares that journey with us, both before, during, and after having cancer. Before receiving this diagnosis, Suleika Jawad was pretty much your average recent college graduate. She was behaving a little bit recklessly. She was trying to figure out what she wanted to do with her life. She was moving around. She entered into a new and exciting relationship but she started noticing some really weird symptoms. She had no idea what was causing them. She saw doctors for a few of them, but nobody knew that they were related and nobody knew really what was going on with her. It was only when things got really bad that doctors finally figured out what was going on inside her body. But it was pretty much at that moment that she received her diagnosis that she transformed from your average 22 year old woman into a patient, constantly being poked and prodded, having to have these treatments that were akin to having poison pumped into her system. And there was a high likelihood that she was eventually going to need a bone marrow transplant. Thankfully, this author had access to treatment and she was also more or less covered by insurance, which is definitely something she acknowledges in the book. She recognizes that if her circumstances had been even slightly different, she very well may have died from cancer. She had a really remarkable support system around her during this time of friends and family, notably her parents and her boyfriend who stayed by her side after her diagnosis. In a virtual event that this author did on the release date for her book that I was lucky enough to watch on that day, she was in discussion with the writer Elizabeth Gilbert. The two of them have actually become friends over the past year because they live close to one another now. But she was saying to her friend Elizabeth Gilbert that when she sat down to write this book, she actually didn't intend for her cancer story to be such a dominant part of this book, she actually wanted to write more about what she did after she went into remission, which I will touch on in just a moment. But it's clear this author had so much more to say about this extremely significant period in her life. And so about 60% of the finished book is about the roughly four years she spent actively battling cancer. But even though you know because this book exists and because I just told you I saw this author give a talk recently, you know that she survived. Even though you know the outcome of that first half of the book, it is still a gripping and harrowing reading experience. But the back 40% of this book is the story of what Jawad did after the active battle with cancer was over. After she received her last treatment, after she was more or less in the clear, she was very much struggling to figure out where she would go from there. She had just spent a substantial period of her young life when she was supposed to be independent, starting to carve a place for herself out in the world. And she had spent spent the majority of that time in a hospital bed. There were some really dark moments that she had of wondering if it would even be possible to move on. There were moments where she would kind of crave getting sick again, because at least then she would be able to go back to something familiar, what had felt like her purpose for the past four years of ridding herself of cancer. What happens when that's over? She decided she needed to do something drastic in order to get herself on the right track. So she decided to take a cross country road trip. On this trip, she wanted to visit with people who had reached out to her or who had helped her during her cancer battle. A lot of these people were existing friends, but some of them were just people who had written to her in response to her New York Times pieces. And one person like that was an inmate on death row in Texas who had written to her because he very much related to that feeling of staring your impending death in the face. In the second part of the book, she talks all about this road trip that she did indeed end up taking. She talks about the logistical concerns and the safety concerns since she was a woman traveling alone, except she did have her dog with her. But she mainly talks about the people 
that she meets along the way. And you can tell as you're reading it with every new person that she meets, every new experience that she has, she's becoming a little bit more independent. And she's starting to understand a little bit more what life is going to look like moving forward. I made a point to lead this review with a discussion of the cancer journey part of this book, not just because that's the first part that appears. So it kind of logically makes sense to move that way. But because I feel like the cover of this book and the premise of this book might lead you to believe if you don't know anything else about this book, that it's predominantly about this road trip that she takes after she goes into remission. And that's not the case. This book is mainly about her cancer journey, because even when she's on the road trip, she is still very much feeling the physical and mental effects of her cancer treatment. As she notes in the book, going through such a serious experience like this isn't something that ever leaves you. You will wear the scars on your body and in the core of your person forever. I know it's a very romantic view of a road trip, that you can leave all your troubles behind and just move forward in that very symbolic way. But that's not really what this road trip is about. It's a period of time to relearn how to be a normal person. It's a chance for her to recenter and get to know herself as this person who's now gone through this experience and has changed over the course of this experience before she gets back to the life that was interrupted. But by highlighting the fact that this book isn't, in fact, all about that road trip, I don't mean to say that I took issue with the structure of this book, because I didn't. I actually thought that the 60-40 split was perfect. I think it was entirely appropriate. I just wish that the cover more reflected that. When I was thinking about what would have communicated what this book was all about, I very much had the idea of a split cover where one half would somehow be a hospital room, something related to the hospital. And then the other side of it is the image you see on the cover of her setting out on this road trip. I think a cover like that or something like it would have been perfect for this book because even the title of this memoir evokes a divide. It's actually based off of something that Susan Sontag says in her book, Illness as Metaphor. She says that all of us are born with dual citizenship in the kingdom of the well and the kingdom of the sick. And eventually we will all spend time in both places. And if there really is any symbolism to this road trip, it's not the symbolism of leaving cancer behind and entering a new life. Instead, it's a movement between those two kingdoms. But there was actually one more symbolic thing about the road trip now that I think about it. And that was the number of days that it was slated to last. She decided that she wanted to be on the road for 100 days. It's actually really good that we as readers got that extended opening section where she discusses the cancer journey or else the significance of those 100 days might be lost on us. But when she was undergoing treatment, she and her close family, her parents and her boyfriend all decided to take on a 100 day challenge where they would all participate in one creative act per day. And they were able to each pick what that creative act was going to be for them. And then 100 days become significant again after her bone marrow transplants, because that first 100 days post-op is a very critical period where if something is going to go wrong, it's probably going to go wrong within that 100 days. So Suleika spending 100 days on the road felt very appropriate. It felt like a way to round out the experience. I became so invested in this book nearly immediately, and that is not a typical thing for me. I normally need maybe 50 to 100 pages to really get into a book. But no, I was really into this book basically right away. And I think that's a real testament to the way that she wrote this. Just for example, in the beginning section when she's experiencing those weird symptoms, I know, you know, we all know, she's going to end up with a cancer diagnosis, but I still was on the edge of my seat. But then as the book goes on, she'll phrase something in a way that just punches you right in the emotions or communicates a beautiful lesson that she learned in a non-flowery way. I mean, she's from New York, so even the wisdom gets straight to the point. There's just this poise and sense of control 
in the way that Jawad tells her story. And you can tell that her motivation for writing this book is exactly that, to tell her story plain and simple. She's not looking to emotionally manipulate the reader. She's not looking to drum up heaps of sympathy. She's just looking to tell her story. In this book, she allows herself to be completely vulnerable. She doesn't sugarcoat anything. And she takes accountability for the things that she did during those years that she's not particularly proud of. In short, you can tell that she gained so much maturity and perspective from both of these experiences, the cancer journey and the road trip, simply in the way that she presents things in this book. I absolutely loved this book. I will admit that it is deeply emotional at times, especially because as someone who spent a lot of time around other cancer patients, this author lost a lot of friends who were fighting their own battles with cancer. She also had a lot of shifting relationships with her own friends and family. This experience in some ways affected her relationship with her parents. But also this book in its own very unique way is kind of a coming of age story because at this pivotal point in her young life, this window of time between early 20s and mid 20s, when all of us do a lot of changing in a very short window of time, she nearly died from cancer. And so in both literal and figurative ways, it changed the fabric of who she is. And for her to have such a firm handle on the whole experience and for her to be able to communicate what that experience meant to her in the beautiful way that she does in this book, it's incredible. It is a powerful and honest memoir, and I loved every second of it. Even the moments when I had to grit my teeth through the descriptions of some of the procedures that she had to go through. I cannot recommend this book enough. I highly suspect it's going to be one of my top nonfiction books of the year. So those were my thoughts on Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jawad. If you've read this book, if you would like to read this book, please do let me know in the comment section below. But if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on social media. The links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. And also in that same description box, there will be a further reading section where I will recommend some titles you might enjoy reading if you really Really loved this book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.